Thank you for joining us as we dedicate the Adams Center for the Visual Arts. And welcome back to those of you who helped us yesterday to dedicate Winter Hall for Science and Mathematics. What a difference these two new facilities have made for our community and especially for our academic enterprise. Today we celebrate the opening of this exceptional space now available for our art faculty and students. We celebrate that the visual arts are now located in the heart of a growing academic corridor. And we celebrate that the Westmont Museum of Art is open to the public and draws even more community visitors to the campus than ever before. As with Winter Hall, there are so many to thank for making Adams Center a reality. Stephen and Denise Adams, Walter and Darlene Hansen, and so many others who have given generously and who are recognized throughout the building and in this area, including the Mosier Foundation, and this is the Mosier Foundation Terrace, the Tui Foundation Conference Room, and the Ray and Sue Ellison Museum Reception Area. On behalf of Westmont, I want to publicly thank the Ellisons, the Mosier Foundation, and the Tui Foundation for their generous gifts to Westmont's Bright Hope for Tomorrow campaign. And if there are representatives from these foundations, would you please raise your hand or stand so that we can acknowledge you. Very pleased, too, that the Student Lounge bears the name of the Westmont College Art Council, which raises funds for the college art program and builds bridges between Westmont and the Santa Barbara community. And would members of the Art Council please stand or raise their hand? Thank you so much. It's now my pleasure to invite our great art lover and trustee, Walter Hansen, to help us understand and appreciate the significance of today's celebration and dedication. Walter? Well, here we finally are at the center of our campus. We have the arts. <laughs> and what is the purpose of this art center at the center of our campus. I have three responses to that. First, this is a place to play. Of course, the artists are hard at work with clay, pigments, forms, and colors. And we who see their work are working hard to understand. When I say this is a place to play, I'm not saying that art is merely a fun pastime or a frivolous luxury or a pursuit of dilettantes and escapists. No, art is an ancient, noble, and serious vocation. The artists who take art as their calling in life, and I know this to be true, are embarked on the way of sweat, toil, and tears. But at the same time, we are all working hard to play here. I use play in the serious sense, like a Shakespeare play. When the first show at the Adams Center featured John Carlander's work, the trustees were given a special private showing one evening. A jazz band was playing in the entrance of the museum. Darlene and I danced a slow rumba as we looked at John's paintings of Venice and Florence. Very romantic. And then the tempo of the band picked up, and we danced a fast swing as we looked at John's splash of primary colors. Seemed so appropriate to dance. I had a very dull tie on when I walked in today, and I thought, John is going to be here. I can't wear this dull tie. I called him and said, John, please lend me one of your ties, otherwise I won't fit in. <laughs> so just as a kind of symbolic way of saying, here I am, I really fit in. You know, I'm part of this club. Thank you, John. Oh, I, my talk just blew away. Yeah, all right. <laughs> it's part of the play. It was in my lines here, let talk blow away. <clears throat> I was blown away by this place.
So this is a joyful place, a place of deep inner refreshment. Now I know there's some who think that the only way to play is to have a baseball bat way on the periphery of the campus <laughs> and to play. And I'm not disparaging that kind of play, it's great. But now right here at the center of campus we have a place of play, a place of deep inner refreshment. Why is it that after 9-11, the art museums were packed in Manhattan? People wanted to be restored. They wanted deep inner refreshment and healing. That's the sense I'm using here, a sense of restoration. Come all you who are bone weary, heavy laden with books, set them down. Come be refreshed be renewed, be restored right here in the center of campus. This is a place of play. And then second, this is a place to be human. As we are playing here, we are expressing the essence of our humanity. Art is the signature of our humanity. God created. God saw what God made. God said, it's good, very good. We create, we see what we create, and we say, this is good. That's what it means to be human, to create, and to see what we create. And so this is a place to be human. As a human place, we are open to all. This is a hospitable place, a place of hospitality where all are welcome. Here is a starting place, an ending place of our global mission to all humanity. Now sometimes we see here subversive art, art confronting us with the reality of our broken, frail humanity. And we see glimmers of the restoration of our wounded humanity. This place makes us long to see the full flourishing, healing of our humanity. I walked in here yesterday and for the first time saw the senior art show. I hope some of you seniors are here. Is Rebecca here? Rebecca Vandervoort? I hope you will tell her I talked about her. What a marvelous depiction of what we've all felt as you walk in on the left-hand side, these three paintings of the afterthought. You know, just after you sat down, you thought, oh, I wish I'd thought of that, or not said that, or had worn a different tie. <laughs> the afterthought. And then I looked on the other side, and there is... Sophia Williams' poetic response to T.S. Eliot, Wasteland. And it's so elusive, it's so mysterious, it's so indecipherable, like so much of life is. And I thought of lines I once had memorized and had to write down again. April is the cruelest month breeding lilacs out of the dead land mixing memory and desire, stirring dull roots with spring rain. The beginning lines of Wasteland and how we've experienced that in our April where we've had the trauma of tsunamis and tornadoes and yet in the midst of all of that ravaged land there still is the beauty of flowers coming to blossom right out of all of the debris as well. Beauty and trauma together and what a depiction there is of that right here, our human experience. And then you walk in the gallery and you see these amazing portraits by Joel Phillips from the little prince, his uncle, himself, his brother, his father, the drunk uncle looking so kind of placid and drunk. <laughs> and himself looking so perplexed, who in the world am I? And where am I going? And his older brother, leaning forward somewhat intimidatingly, 
and his father leaning back aloof. What a depiction of family, of life, of himself, of humanity, a place to be human. And then this portrait of the two who really had the original vision and gave so generously that we might have this place, Steve and Denise Adams, this marvelous portrait by John Nava. Yes, art is a place to be human, to see ourselves in all of our frailty and fragility and brokenness, brokenness, and at the same time have a yearning, a longing for the healing and restoration of our humanity. I referred to Shakespeare play, and as I was walking through, I thought again of that great line from the end of King Lear, where out on the heath, the ravaged Lear turns to the blind Gloucester and says to Gloucester, how do you see the world? And Gloucester says, I see it feelingly. And I feel that's what artists do for us. They see life feelingly. It's a place of play. It's a place to be human. And it's a place to worship. In the restoration of our humanity through art, we are led to our maker and redeemer. Indeed, we sometimes feel the real presence of our maker as we are looking at art place to worship. As I look at Sue Savage's convocation of silver bowls and silver sphere, I'm led into a mysterious sacred realm. I'm led to meditate, to contemplate, but more than that, I'm led to worship. I'm led into the holy presence. I feel that I'm on holy ground. This place leads me to worship our creator. Thank you, Walter. At this point, I'd like to invite forward Art Department Chair Lisa DeBoer and Westmont Museum of Art Director Judy Larson to unveil the dedication plaque for the building as well as those who will lead us in our dedicatory prayer. Board of Trustees Chair Vince Nelson, retiring professor of art John Carlander, graduating art major Julia Johnson. Would you please come forward? As Lisa and Judy unveil the plaque, here is what it says. Adams Center for the Visual Arts, dedicated this day, May 2011. The true work of art is but a shadow of the divine perfection from Michelangelo. Now we invite you to join us in the dedicatory prayer, which is a responsive reading. Creator God, whose magnificent handiwork fills us with awe, gratitude, and praise, we pray that we will increasingly see and appreciate the beauty of your creative presence all around us. Almighty God, who dwells in the beauty of holiness, we pray that you will bless our art faculty and students with vision to inspire them, light to guide them, and wisdom to direct them. We dedicate those who will study, teach, and create art here, and pray that they will be moved by your Holy Spirit to carry on your creative work. Spirit of the living God, who engraves divine understanding not on stone tablets but on human hearts, we pray that you will continue to fill the artists among us with skills that are used to honor and glorify you. We dedicate this place and ourselves to you. Have I no way, Lord. You are the potter, and we are the clay. Melt us and mold us after thy will, that others may see the beauty and glory of your creation within us. Amen. Mr. 
brief ceremony will end with two ribbon cuttings, followed by a reception and open house. One ribbon will be cut to your left, inviting you to tour the wonderful studios for our painters, sculptors, printmakers. Another ribbon will be cut to your right, inviting us into the Museum of Art to see some of the work of our senior art majors. As you enter, be sure to see on your left the beautiful oil painting of Steve and Denise Adams, which was unveiled recently. To uh, please move to the, the cutting ribbon over by the studios. Senior Julia Johnson and the members of our art faculty. Cutting the ribbon to the Westmont Museum of Art, our museum director, Judy Larson, Professor Emeritus and former Reynolds Gallery Art Director, Tony Askew, and Westmont Art Council President, Mary Beth Vogelbank. Along with Vice Chair, Patty Martin. 